All right, let's go. All right, so a lot of things have changed since the last time of the Oblivion mod playthrough. And a few things have changed since the Oblivion modded playthrough as well. So one of the few things... That was a really good jump. Uh, that has changed, of course, is a lot of the armor scripts, as you can probably already tell, because we've had it trigger about three or four times, kind of thing. And that is that any time we enter an interior, of course, we get a pop-up that asks us if we want a light or night eye. Uh, if you don't know, uh... Oh. Am I just getting extremely unlucky, or is it... Oh, no, it's just not charged. Alright. Um... Right, so I'll just wait till the game before I start explaining any further. Alright, there should be... Two assistants in here? Yeah. Hello. Oh, hello, guildmate. You're welcome to explore this site as much as you wish. Yay! Uh... You only have two people, apparently. Um... Domitian... I think, uh, Varus? I knew Varus from our studies at the Imperial City. He was always a little, mm, how would you say, unconventional? To this day, he holds the record for climbing the highest up White Gold Tower, completely unaided. He came down pretty quickly after that, but he insisted all along that he was doing it in the interest of Iliad research. Of course, no one believed him. I mean, you could smell the Tamika wine if you so much as stood downwind of him. What? Personally, I always had time for him. I looked up to him, like you would with a sweet but misguided uncle. His theories were brilliantly unconventional, and the Iliads were like that too. Always defying expectations. But sure enough, soon afterwards, he submitted a paper on the religious significance of Iliad towers that stunned even the council. Try not to be too hard on him, hmm? Well, I'm not going to be. Uh, Teev. Of all the members, Teev's my favorite, so it was wonderful being chosen as his assistant for my first assignment. Yay! Even amongst Argonians, his swimming ability was considerable. He told me it was this, rather than any studies, that led to his appointment here. There's a lake near Black Rose in the Black Marsh where he comes from that he used to swim in. The basin is encrusted with jewels beneath thin layers of silt after a land cascade. The waters look dark as midnight from the surface, but once you submerge yourself and dive down into the depths, you'll find, in Teve's own words, stars that glitter from the deep like some dark heaven. He's often used that story to tell me to keep my mind focused on what's important and not to rely entirely upon my studies. To everyone's surprise, Teve has always been on good terms with Tumir, the Khajiit, Although he does keep telling him that of all the gems he collects, he likes the cat's eyes the most. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Bye now. Is there another one over here? No, so he's on the stairs then. Okay, good. Whoa! whoa. That was kind of weird. Ah, uh, he's floating! Man, these guys are magical! Okay. Have you ever seen anything like these? Cernus. These glyphs are amazing, but what do they mean? They mean nothing. I don't know. Uh, Norlin. Who? Norlin? Isn't he one of the nicest Dunmers you'll ever find? Although I realize that's not saying much. Of course, I could have been enchanted. Ah, that's happened a few times. I am the longest serving assistant here. And I remember that when she joined, the uh, Dark Brotherhood had a contract out on her. When Wright got wind of this, he and Teve went out on vigils to catch the agents at work and seek a parley. Somehow, and against the Brotherhood's traditions, Wright succeeded in reversing the contract and turning it against their client, a rival Dunbar family with whom they'd held a long-standing feud. Once Dang. this was done, she became very, uh, grateful to us. Wow. And I do not think there is anything she does not know about mythology, from here to High Rock. Okay, then. Now there is no need to make a piano. What? I don't... I didn't make...
make you angry, did I? I didn't mean to, but I didn't mean to. Alright, alright, let's go in. Newfound Spire Ruin. Yeah, so one of the few uh, scripts that got added to the armor was this light in Night Eye 1. It really does as intended. Okay, well, I need to do something. I don't have it yet. But we're going to do something really, really quick. Should have realized it before, but I think... Wait, what? Oh no, that's not right. It says real quick. Quickly now. Get your light. Uh, recharge. There you go. Uh, hi. Man, these bears are really friendly. Yay! Alright. There you go. So, one of the few things that I ended up doing uh, as well, well I'm going to talk about the weapon right now, because uh, the armor I can literally just play through the entire mod with it, but for the weapon, I wanted to sort of, uh, sort of talk about it a little bit. So, I changed it so that instead of it always being able to be used uh, without anything, um... I ended up giving it its uh, sort of effects. So the first thing you're going to notice is that it actually has a name now rather than being called the Dark King's Blade. Uh, Drathus' sword is actually named Twisted Light. It was originally a holy sword that got corrupted by dark magic and so it changed into an unholy sword. Anyway, so that's where it was it had uh, pretty much it had the ability of changing or it had the ability of manipulating the light to its advantages so it was able to twist light so to speak so that's why it's called that and pl plus it's a double sort of meaning because since it since you twisted the light into darkness it makes sense uh anyway so the effects are very very simple um so I'm going to go down the list from the top to the bottom, so you understand what it is. Uh, the first one, 50% chance to inflict elemental damage on strike. This is as close to chaos damage from Skyrim as you can get inside of Oblivion. So how it's supposed to work is that each and every sort of variable that gets occurred has a 1 in 8th chance or 12.5% chance. Unfortunately, Oblivion can't really do that sort of calculation. So the closest that I can do is either all of them be 12 and have an extra 4 do nothing, which already has 12% doing nothing, so it would be 16% nothing and everything else would have a 12% chance of working. Or I do it this way. So Fire, Frost, and Shock have a 13% chance of occurring. So does doing nothing. Uh, every dual version, so Fire Frost, uh, Frost Shock, and Shock Fire, so all the dual ones, have a 12% chance of occurring, and so does getting all three at once. Now, the dual, uh, now the, for the single ones, they only do 35 points of damage for those ones. For the dual ones, they're 30 points each. So that means that both of them are like, together, they're like 60 points of damage. So it's stronger, but it's not as good on one element. So if they're immune to one of the elements, you're not doing as much damage. And of course, for all three is, of course, 25 each. So that's 75 altogether. So there you go. 20% uh, chance to damage equipment on strike. This is what originally had the random enchantment. So the random enchantment had three different effects. You're currently seeing them right here. Uh, it is the 20%, the 1%, and the 5% chance. Uh, 
those ones are all specifically that uh, that mechanic in there. Uh, the silence on strike, there is no percentage chance. You're always guaranteed silence on the opponent. Now, the, the percent chance that's actually a part of that script is how long the duration is. 40% chance, you get a 4 second silence on the target. You have a 30% chance of getting 6 seconds. You have a 20% chance of getting 8 seconds. And for the final 10%, you have a 10 second one. So it's amazing to do it that way. One, You have a 1% chance of causing curse on strike. This curse, by by the way, is a dumbed, uh, is sort of a, a drop down version of the cursed hand. I got rid of most of the useless stuff that doesn't really need to matter. So I got rid of like let's say we I think it's weakness to disease, poison, and normal weapons. And I think I dropped down how long they last and how effective they are. I think it's like fifty for five seconds, I think, or something like that. So it's not as strong, but it's it's pretty close. You have a 5% chance to paralyze any enemy on strike. Actually, I need to go pick something else up at the house too. Uh, and for the final thing, uh, Nourish Blade on strike. This is actually kind of interesting. So there is a weapon. Uh, I'm going to go pick up the thing I need to go pick up. I forgot to pick it up. So there is actually a uh, weapon already uh, in the game pretty uh, actually it's in shivering isles specifically uh and all it pretty much does in shivering isles is that uh, it allows it that it changes uh into an alternate version of it during the day and night cycle so it changes depending on the time of day now, in theory, this is actually a very good weapon. Oh, I accidentally stored it all in there. Okay, well, I'll take that all. So I took what that script does, sort of decoded how it did how it did its uh, calculations and how it did its changing, and used it to my benefit. For my sword, so though it was a little bit different. So now my sword, I clicked the wrong thing again. It's the travel chest, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm keeping that in there. No, it's awesome. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna put a sound cue for it. But for the most part, uh, how the sword actually does get its regeneration factor is if the player actually gets 100 kills with it. Now, the cool thing is that I can actually monitor this through the game. Oh, these guys are actually kind of friendly. Hi, buddy. Yeah, let me just go and uh, help you out. Oh, I don't think he wants me to help him out at all. There you go, he did. Alright. I'm gonna help you out a little bit. There you go. Alright. Uh, yeah, so I found out how to do it, and, and I also changed it to sort of fit my uh, sword here. Now, of course, the problem with the original weapon, and I'm trying to figure out if there's actually a way that I can sort of get around this sort of, uh, sort of limitation, if you will. Okay. So the uh, original limitation of this of that enchantment, the Nourish Blade, I literally just copied what it said. Uh, There's no point in changing it because I couldn't come up with anything. Uh, I was thinking of like uh, like something like rejuvenating kind of thing, but then that didn't make much sense in the context of it because it's because 
I couldn't come up with a way to make it sound like the fire is not rejuvenating, it's the sword, but it never, but I could never come up with a way of making it sound like you're not the one that's getting recovered, it's the sword that is. So there's that. So yeah, so I just remembered that for that sword, they called it, um, uh, Nourish Blade, so I thought that's just as good. But then again, the sword's supposed to be like bloodthirsty kind of thing, and Twisted Light's not really bloodthirsty, but it's so it makes sense. And that's pretty much all of the armor enchantments. Um, or all the weapon enchantments, I meant to say, not the armor. We haven't talked about the armor one nearly as much. Uh, so we have the health, magicka, and fatigue regeneration things th that hasn't changed so that's all good that's happiness uh, right there uh, the other thing that got added is that I don't think it's really gonna affect us as much uh, because we are pretty stacked in the one department yeah we're it's never gonna happen uh, we, I have a fame and infamy uh, switcher system, or technically it uh, changes one to the other. So how it works is that every 24 hours in game, uh, what it does is it scans both your infamy and fame. If whichever one is higher, will continue go getting higher, and the one that's lower will continue going lower. So in this uh, sort of scenario that I'm in right now there it is so in this kind of scenario right now since I have over 200 fame and let's say I gain one infamy after 24 hours that one infamy will move to my fame and it will remove itself from the infamy so that way though I don't have any infamy because you know I want my character to remain famous and sometimes you know you get bored one time and you kill the innocents in the game and you go, oh man, I didn't want that to be like a giant, like, I didn't want that to stain my character of that. So, you know what? I want to change it a little bit. There you go. Uh, the other thing is that this actually took a while to actually do. I want to actually see if it's still, if it's actually working properly. 